I'd like you to imagine a world filled with robots. I mean completely filled. All the way to the point where we never have to leave our homes again. We could have a little robot version of us go out into the world and do our work for us. We could sit in a chair all day, I don't know, essentially be on vacation forever. Does this sound like utopia? I don't know. It's pretty strange to me, but there would be parts of this that would be really nice. So when I mention quality of life, what does this mean to you? For many of us, it probably means having more free time and a lot less work. For example, I mean, would you prefer cleaning your home or golfing with your friends? Would you prefer mowing your lawn or, golf or boating with um, your buddies? Would you prefer working long weekends of overtime or spending time at the cabin with your family? I would expect that if I have ways where you can work less and have more free time, you would want to know about them. So automation, specifically robots, are all about improving the quality of our lives. So when I mention the word robots, what comes to mind? Is it this? Is it maybe this? It could even be this. You may be surprised to learn that robots are already commonplace in our lives and making it better. For example, there's robot vacuums. Listen, if you're gonna get somebody a vacuum as a present, I would suggest a robot one. <laughs> also, we have automated car washes, sprinkler systems, ATMs, and now there's even robotic lawnmowers. As you can see, they're already in our lives and are already making our lives easier by saving us time and energy. One area in particular that has the potential to dramatically impact our economy and our quality of lives is robots in manufacturing. Now my career centers around helping manufacturers automate their production systems. Currently, worldwide, there is 2.7 million robots working in factories. There's 293,000 in the US and of those about 3,900 in Minnesota. These robots, they, per they perform a wide variety of tasks, including welding, palletizing, material handling, assembly, high-speed packaging. They are even used to load and unload machine tools and press equipment. Honestly, given enough time and money, there really is no limit to what they can do. Now, investment in automation is happening across the globe. This chart actually shows the top robot purchasers in 2019. As you can see, China far exceeds the other 14 countries. In fact, China's number is about the same as the next five countries combined. You can notice that the US is third. China has actually had really low labor costs. And because of this, we've seen a lot of US manufacturing move to China. China also now has a growing economy and the quality of life for its citizens has increased, but this has also created a skills shortage, or skills, labor shortage and skills gap in the labor needed to get all of this work done. Because of this, their employees are demanding higher wages and safer places to work. Now, you can keep that manufacturing in the US, but automate it for the exact same cost. And this drastically reduces a lot of complications with manufacturing overseas. One of which right now is shipping large volumes in containers across the ocean, only for them to wait three months when they get here to be unloaded. Another one is it drastically reduces the risk of your designs being stolen. This next chart actually shows robot density Robot density is, gives a little bit different perspective. The US is ninth on this list and China is 15th. The US is actually a little bit behind some European countries and other developed Asian countries, but the US has also had lower labor costs compared to those parts of the world. Now, when the subject of robots in US manufacturing comes up, 
oftentimes the concern about robots taking our jobs is raised. So the real question is, are robots taking our jobs? In some cases, yes, but overwhelmingly no. With our current employee shortage, robots are actually allowing companies to reassign employees to shorthanded locations in their factories. These factory workers can then perform work in those areas, in those areas that robots cannot work, usually pay more, and are in the highest demand for workers. Robots are also used to help companies grow. One of the biggest restrictions to company growth is the inability to hire employees. Using robots, companies can grow, and along with that, it actually opens up more jobs in all other areas of the company. Now, robots can also perform dirty and dangerous work, once done by humans, but yet today there are a lot of people running dangerous machinery. For example, if a robot gets cr uh, crushed in a press, it can be fixed. The, the outcome for a human in this situation would not be so positive. Right? Early on in my career, I was actually installing a robot to load and unload machining centers. These machining centers were going to be turning brake drums for tractor trailers. They were pretty big parts, probably about 75 pounds each. As you can imagine, when we arrived, the employees there were not overly happy to see us. This robot was going to be doing the work that they were currently doing. We got the system installed and I left. About three months later, I returned to this company to tweak a couple of things on the systems. One of the operators who had been manually loading and unloading these machines was now running the robot. I asked him how the robot was running and how he was doing. The first thing out of his mouth was, this thing is great. I cannot believe I used to do that every day. I have so much energy when I get home, I can actually enjoy the night. In the past, I was so tired, I didn't do anything at all. None of those employees that had been manually loading the machines were replaced. They were all reassigned in the factory. Many of them were actually given the opportunity to learn how to operate the robot and take on a new role for the company. Now, dirty and dangerous work today is going to go unfilled. We have a huge labor shortage. Because of this, younger generations they have so many employment options right now. If they don't like something, they are not going to do it. Millennials and Gen Zs have spent their entire lives using technology to make their lives easier. This is a really powerful mindset. They are attracted to automation, and they will go out of their way to automate things they do not physically want to do. Robots are actually much more precise and accurate than humans can be as well. And because of this, we're actually using them a lot in surgeries, where they have increased accuracy and efficiency in the surgery, decreased invasiveness, and they're also a lot better healing outcomes. Similarly, you might actually remember when getting 100,000 miles on a car was a really big deal. Right? Today, cars are pretty reliable, it's pretty easy to do that, a lot of people do it in five years, right? In the past also, you might remember huge recalls when there was a quality issue. Automation, robotics, park tracking have allowed automakers to identify quality issues all the way down to the vehicle's identification number, right? And this lessens the impact on the consumer and the automaker. But best of all, if the cost of that recall is less, the less cost will be passed on to future buyers. Now, there is a giant demand in the US for automation, mainly driven by the employee shortage. So automation companies are popping up weekly and they all need employees, right? Some examples of employees in this company are robot programmers and service engineers, many of which only require a two-year degree from a community college. This is actually the, the degree I chose and it opened up employment options and opportunities beyond my wildest dreams. Now, because of this increased demand, there's also need for mechanical and electrical engineers to design the systems, 
along with fabricators, machinists, and assemblers to build what has been designed. This has grown so rapidly that it's made its way all the way to school-age kids. Right? We've seen a big increase in robotics programs in high schools. Students in these programs actually learn engineering, programming, electronics, along with teamwork and leadership skills. This is the only sport in high school that if you want to go pro, you have an amazing chance of doing that. <laughs> now, I started this talk by talking about the quality of our lives. As you can tell, I'm a huge proponent of how automation and robotics can improve the quality of our lives. Let's let the robots do the work.